Welcome back. So this is a full walkthrough of the automatic current operations that's uh, supported by Telerik. Um, what I have is a grid. The grid's able to select, update, insert, or delete rows. Uh, the grid has four columns, well, actually three columns of data and a couple of, uh, of action buttons. Um, and it's, it's hooked up through an object data source. There's a bunch of different ways you can get data into a grid. Um, one way is using the entity domain model, which we're not going to use because we have the DAL. And uh, another way is an object data source. So the object data source is smart enough to hook up to classes, data classes, if you will. And within those classes, call methods. And there's an update method or list method there. So, so in other words, this there's a class that has these four methods, and these four methods expect expect these parameters. And when they're called correctly, it will display or update or insert or delete data. The backend code, you'll notice that there's not a lot of uh, there's no SQL, there's no um, data mapping, if you will. Uh, I've got a page load event which is blank for now. I've got a needs data source event. Let's see if I can zap in or uh, zoom into it. A needs data source event, which is called when the grid uh, lacks a data source. I've got an item created event. I'll explain what that is later. But basically, when I'm doing the edits or you know, when I'm doing the edit or insert, the view of the forms or the view of the grid changed a bit. An item inserted event, which essentially is just looking for exceptions. I've got a display message event, which is called from a couple different places to display a literal message. A set message event. This this private grid message should probably be moved to the top so we can it's easily readable. A pre-render. Pre-render is an event that's called um, by the by the UI before the grid is rendered, before you could see it on the screen. So imagine if you had a bunch of different changes or 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 data that you want to set in your grid, but you don't want it flashing to the customer. You don't want, you know, uh, you don't want to watch it actually start selecting things. So if you do it, if you do it after the grid is rendered, the screen could flash a little bit. There's a pre-render event to capture that. And then for right now, I have it. I have it doing nothing but the item command event. Take a look at this at this structure. Item command. If I hit a command, if I hit a but an item command for a grid. So let's say. Um, Let's say that grid had check boxes the whole way down, and I wanted to remove things that were checked. I check what I want to check, click a button, and then this has to iterate through each one of the items that were in the grid, and then re either um, serialize or parse them out, or for each one call a certain item. You'll see it later on. So you, again, there's no data mapping in this. The data mapping happens in the ASP page, where I'm mapping fields. So for instance. Uh, group ID is mapped to data item, or is it? So that's data type. Group ID, data field. Group ID, great. Uh, group name, participation level ID. There's a delete button and an edit button. Now, I'm using the just the vanilla grid bound column. And I'll show you some ways to, uh, the, the grid bound column is a little bit um, limiting. Uh, when you go to edit, it gets a little tricky. You'll, you'll see later on. And then I have my grid. I Here's my, need, my needs data source method, my item command method. I allow paging. I allow automatic updates and inserts and deletes. And one last big piece is this data key names in the master table view section I have to set the data key names in other words a key for that grid so when it comes to deletes and updates and inserts it knows how to fill out the parameters for you automatically all right so let's take a look and see what this looks like I'm running it in Chrome now I, I just have every record in the table show. Now there's no logic as far as selecting which which record um, and it's just for demo purposes but really I probably should only see the, gr the, the groups that I have access to. 
Okay, so I have a grid. One, two, three, four, five columns. The grid's able to be filtered. I'm able to add a new item to the grid, edit an item, delete an item. So let's take a look what an edit looks like. If I click edit, I'm able to edit the group name and participation level. And I can't edit the group ID because I have it as read only because you can't edit a key value. So let's change this to four. Click update. It's set to four. I want to change this one says test zero to say test zero. I update. Now you notice that when I did the update, it didn't do a post. That's key. It didn't do a post. So in other words, usually when you do an update, you have to post that data back to the server. You notice that little icon that's that blue uh, circle that's kind of, you can't really see it on the video, but um, that's Ajax working in the background. All these controls are Ajaxified. They call it Ajaxified. Um, and that's pretty simple to do. If you go back to the, the ASP page, what I have is an, an Ajax manager and a loading panel. So the loading panel is just a tag that you have to have on the anything that you're going to do with Ajax. And then I have Ajax manager. So what Ajax manager says is call up an Ajax manager or def define the tag. This is the control ID, radgrid. So radgrid1 is this radgrid1. And what this Ajax manager says is if radgrid1 one were to change, then the update or update the control radgrid1. Now it, it, it kind of makes sense, but let's say you had let's say you had two different controls. This happens to say I have to update the same control that I have. But let's say let's say uh, on this screen if I had two grids, grid A and grid B that was down here and I, I sized them correctly. As I select a record, literally just select or click into a record, I want the bottom grid to be refreshed and I don't want a post to do it. That's what Ajax is for. And you would have rad grid 1 as the control ID and rad grid 2 as the updated control ID. Pretty neat. You also have to call out the Ajax control panel, which is, or I'm sorry, the loading panel, which is this. So literally four or five lines of code Ajaxifies your controls. Neat stuff. My object data source again, I have my CRUD methods called out and the type name, Volunteer, Business Layer, VT, SP Group, BLL. So this is saying go out and look for Volunteer, Business Logic, VT, which we know is over here. There's SP Group, BLL. And within this, I see, uh, I see methods, list groups, insert group, update group, delete group. And look how much data is or really isn't here. I, there's not a lot. Well, in the BLL, there isn't a lot because I'm just calling the DL, DAL. But even the DAL, let's take a look what's out there. Not much. I'm returning a list of values. I am returning a list of values on the insert. Now, the insert returns a list of values because the GUID's in there. And if I wanted to capture the GUID, remember the GUID that's returned. Update and delete just calls the method. I mean this is, uh, trust me when I tell you, this is a thousand percent easier than doing it through SQL. Another thing that's different is, it, or the reason why this is such a big deal is if I were to change a column name and then refresh my data model, things like that would start to fail because it's looking for a column coming back called new group ID. And if that column doesn't match the data model, it will it will be found out at compile time and not run time. Excellent. Okay. So now th there, there is some bad news about doing it in this method, doing it, um, doing the updates like this. You sort of lose control. You notice that, uh, there, you notice that anywhere in here, I'm not calling, specifically calling the delete method. The grid, because it has the automatic updates and deletes turned on, it knows how to plug in the update and delete methods with the object data source. But you don't have a lot of control over it. You could probably try to capture the object data source updating event if you wanted to change a parameter or something like that. But I, I honestly, I, I really don't like doing it like this. I'd rather call the method myself. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll have 
the object data source called out, the type name called out, everything here done. I might even have the methods in here, but when it actually comes to calling the insert or update, I, I just pr prefer to do it in the code behind. Um, first of all, it's easier to debug. So if you have an issue, if you have a, a data sending issue, it's easier to debug and um, you have a lot more control. And at that time, you can, you can also start using what's called um, uh, template columns. So instead of having to be stuck with a, a, a bound column like that, you can have different controls based on the view that you're in. For example, if you have a date, uh, if you have a date field, let's say there's a date field, when you're in when you're in select mode, you're okay with the date being year month day. But if I'm in edit mode, I want that calendar control to show up and be able to pick the the calendar or pick a date from the calendar. And then when I save, go back into regular bound mode, or go back into regular label mode. You could do that with an item com. And that's certainly something we're going to do in the next one. I'm not going to do any more work on Manage Org. I'm going to save that. I'm going to post it. And then I'll probably do another grid um, example with, um, with, with hard code. In other words, with the template columns and me calling the, the, the methods implicitly. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye.